presentation of the Rio Grande Oil Company. Stop and police calling all cars, attention all cars. Attention all San Joaquin County Sheriff's cars. Broadcast 64 regarding a murder. Pick up Pete Liliopoulos, described as a Greek, 5 feet 10 inches tall. Has black hair, black eyes. Wearing a dark suit, no hat. That's all. Flash, for the third consecutive year, the city of Los Angeles again awards its gasoline contract to Rio Grande. Proof again that Rio Grande cracked gasoline gives greater speed, greater power than uncracked gasoline. Unless there is really something superior about this gasoline, why should it be selected wherever it is sold to power more police cars, fire engines, and other emergency equipment than any other brand? The police department of Los Angeles takes pride in the record-breaking speed of its radio police cars, which often respond to emergency calls within a few seconds. As the speed of these police cars depends upon the gasoline, Naturally, the city carefully tests all the leading brands. You can get the same Rio Grande cracked gasoline with tetraethyl at no extra price at an independent service station near you. And you too can enjoy the thrill of police car performance. Now it is our pleasure to bring you Deputy Sheriff Rudolph T. Weber of San Joaquin County, who will speak to you from San Francisco. Good evening. It was, good evening. It was with great... Good evening. It was with great pleasure that I accepted the request of my chief, Sheriff Harvey O'Dell of San Joaquin County, to appear as his representative on tonight's broadcast of Calling All Cars. The case Sheriff O'Dell has selected from San Joaquin County files is the most interesting one. At first glance, it would appear to be a clueless crime. Although the murderer was identified by several witnesses, he vanished immediately after he fired the fatal shot. For two years, we searched for him. It was a heartbreaking task. Finally, by checking the court records at Portland, Oregon, we were able to ascertain the true identity of the murderer and obtain a key to his past records. In the end, we got that key, and we got our man. What he did... And how we caught him, you are about to hear. On with the show. Yeah. On with the show. And how we, what he did, we were able to ascertain the true identity of the murderer and obtain a key, and obtain a key to his past record. In the end, we got that key, and we got our man. What he did, and how we caught him, you are about to hear. On with the show. Church of Stockton, California, is filled with laughing, playing children. School has just been let out, and before them stretches a long afternoon to explore the reawakening world. At the door of the schoolhouse, Miss Martha Parsons, the school teacher, is putting on her hat 
when the janitor approaches. Yes, Robert, it was such a beautiful day. I'm sure the children would rather be out of doors than the keep up looking at me dreaming about geography. It certainly is a nice day, no doubt about that. And I'm sure that you ought to be closing up and going home to work in your garden, don't you, Robert? Yes, I reckon I can get a lot of work done this afternoon. Of course, uh, you wasn't figuring on enjoying the afternoon a bit yourself, was you, Miss Parson? <laughs> no, Robert. How could you accuse me of such a thing? Mighty nice afternoon for a drive. That is, if that young fellow in the Ford were to drop by. Have Miss Parson? Robert, you, you ought to be ashamed. Why? Nothing wrong if you want to go riding with a young man. After all, it's spring. Right now, if I was 40 years younger, I'd be asking you to go riding myself. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know what that means. Maybe it's just spring. Well, it's got to be closing up, I guess. Good afternoon, Miss Parker. Good afternoon, Robert. Well, here comes my father. 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 I wonder what he can I wonder what he can want. Good afternoon, Mr. Liliopoulos. Uh, wonderful weather we're having, isn't it? Lord, Lord. Why, you look You're all red in the face. I'll fix it all. What, what is it? What have I done? All the time you... Done? All the time you scold my Marie. I know more than any of the other children. I only get to do it for me. You scold my girl. I fix it all. No, 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 no. With a vicious kick that the inert body of a school teacher, the murderer throws down his gun and runs out of the yard past the huddled group of fighting children. Within 20 minutes, Sheriff Harvey M. Odell of San Joaquin County arrives on the scene, questions the children and the slightly wounded janitor. Well, I'm sent for a doctor, Robert. Does it hurt very much? It changed me quite a little, but it's only in the shoulder. Now, did you get a good look at the man who murdered Miss Parsons? I did, Sheriff. Ring Papa did it, Sheriff. Pete, the fruit man, did it. Pete, the fruit man? He's Liliopolis, Sheriff. You know him. Yes. And who is this Marie? He's his little girl. She goes to school here. Well, where is she now? Over there by the drinking fountain, crying. She's frightened out of her wit, poor child. Well, I'll go and have a talk with her. No, no, don't you cry, Marie. I want to talk to you. Now, please stop crying. Yes, sir. Was it your daddy who shot Miss Parsons? Yes, yes, sir. Why did he do it? I, I don't know. Was he mad at Miss Parsons? I, I guess he was. But why? Well, Last week, Miss Parsons kept me after school, and yesterday, she slapped my hair with a ruler. Well, why did she do that? Because I was a bad girl, I guess. But Papa don't think I'm a bad girl. Papa loves me. He loves me more than he does my sister. His fellow sisters. Who are they? They're my brothers and sisters. But Papa loves me most because he's... He says, I look like my mama. Uh, where is your mama? I don't know. She went away a long time ago. But, but she was wearing a black sock. When I said black sock, when I say, yeah. when I say. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. Well, Marie, you better. Well, Marie, you better stop. Well, Marie, you better stop. Well, Marie, you better stop crying. Well, Marie, you better stop crying. Well, Marie, you better stop crying now and go home. Stop crying now and go home. You're just crying now. Well, Marie, you better stop. Well, Marie, you better stop crying. Well, Marie, you better stop crying now and go home. And your daddy will be waiting for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you want to do some detective work? Oh, sure thing. All right, you follow Marie home and play around her house and watch for her father. And if he comes home, you hurry down to the courthouse and let me know. Yes, sir. And don't tell anybody what you're doing. This is a secret mission. Oh, don't worry, Sheriff. 
I'll do it just like one Philip. I'll do it. Don't worry, Philip. I'll do it just like these, Philip. I'll do it just like I'm Philip. I'll do it just like they do in the detective book. While police radios and the state teletype broadcast the description of the wanted Pete Liliopoulos, Sheriff Odell leads a posse of hastily sworn-in deputies through the hills around Stockton. Late that night, he returns to his office, where Wilbur C. Worcester, his chief criminal deputy, is waiting for him. Well, Wilbur, just for a double check, I've compared the fingerprints and the gun found at the scene of the murder with fingerprints on Liliopoulos' home. They match. There's no question of a doubt that the murderer is Liliopoulos. And I didn't think there would be. Did you find out where he got the gun? He bought it at the Sterling Hardware Company day before yesterday. All right. Have 5,000 circulars printed describing him and giving his fingerprint classifications as well as his picture. Did you find a picture of him? I did. Taken several years ago from the looks of the clothes he's wearing. Here it is. Well, that'll be all right. Looks are not like him. We'll have these circulars sent to every police department in the United States and Canada. Yes, sir. And then we'll have to get the wires right out asking San Francisco and Los Angeles to check steamship departures. And you might as well include Boston, New York, and New Orleans. You know, if he got away from the coast by plane, he could sail from New York to Boston day after tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. You got the men straight out of the house? Yes. There are two men watching the house and another watching the mail. Good. Well, they can't get far away. And in any case, he'll try to communicate to those four kids of his if he doesn't actually come back home for them. It won't be long now before we put that bird in the death house. But despite every method known to modern peace officers in creating a nationwide police cordon, Pete Liliopoulos vanishes. After three fruitless months have elapsed, District Attorney Guard C. Dara called Sheriff Odell into his office. Harvey, to his office. Odell, into his office. Harvey, I want to know what you've done on that Liliopolis. I want to know what you've done on that Liliopolis case. Everything I can think of, we've sent circulars all over the country, and we've watched the house, and we've over the country, and we've watched the house, and we've had the forts both here and in the east covered. But well, we've even had a couple of ambitious boy detectives pumping guilty off of his children. If we haven't gotten any further than we were on the day Miss Parsons was murdered. Have the kids heard from their old man? Not a word. And there's been no attempt to communicate with them. He's abandoned them, all right. That's what they say a criminal always returns to the scene of his crime. Well, not this one, apparently. Of course, he didn't do anything according to rule book. He didn't even have any regular motive for the murder. He just got mad and went gun drunk. Well, how about your circulars? Any reply from them? Over 50 letters and wires from all over the United States and Canada. Eight suspects have been jailed, and every one of them has turned out to be the wrong man. Well, how the devil did he get out of town in the first place? Well, we know that, all right. He drove out of town right after the murder and stayed for several days with some friends at Manteca. And then our men found his abandoned car in an orchard near Savita and located the ranch where he'd changed his clothes. He burned them and got some new ones from Greek friends. And then, while our posse was looking for him, he returned to the home of another friend to bid his children goodbye. We missed him by five minutes, and he hasn't been heard of since. You know, it's a mighty tough nut to crack, but there's nothing but go on. He's questioned all his friends, and I've even gone to San Francisco and talked at the Greek consul. And no one knows where Liliopolis has gone. There just aren't any clues. Mm. I wonder what Ellis Parker would do with a case without clues. Ellis Parker? Sure, you remember him. He's that Eastern detective who was out here a few years ago in that circus murder case. He's got a big reputation. Oh, sure, I remember. Now, I was a deputy at the time. Well, if you want to call in an outside man, you might as well. I confess I've done all I can. I know you have, Harvey. Now, don't construe this as a criticism of you, but I'd like to see what this modern Sherlock Holmes would do with no clues at all. Well, now, why don't you write to him, then? I believe I will, just for the fun of it. And it can't hurt him, and he might help us get a fresh angle on the case. <laughs> District Attorney Darrow writes to his friend, Ellis Parker, Chief of Detectives of Burlington County, New Jersey, sending him the files on the case and asking his opinion. After boring over the material, Parker dictates a reply to Darrow. They say the murderer is inevitably returned to the scene of the crime. That isn't quite true. My observation after handling thousands of cases has been that a murderer, unless he's a common gangster type, 
almost always tries to hide out near his original home. He has a subconscious feeling that he knows all the roads there. He can most easily avoid pursuit in a familiar locality. Therefore, I would say that the best way of tracing this man is to follow his backtrack. Find out where he came from and take up the case there. But there's no such thing as a case without clues. And District Attorney Darrow answers Chief of Detectives Parker? Not such a bad idea, excepting that we thought of it already and there isn't any backtrack. Liliopolis' wife died in giving birth to the last baby, and none of the children remember where they lived before they came here. Not even his fellow Greeks know anything about Liliopolis' past. And I'm just wondering what you'd do if you had to solve it. In his office in New Jersey, Keith Parker mulls over the challenge from his friend in Stockton. Leaks through the records of the murder, sings out loud. No clues, huh? Clues the crime? There isn't such a thing. Let me see. Let me see. There isn't such a thing. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. 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 I left an excellent clue behind him. There's four children in a clue. Marie, born in Stockton, age nine. Steve, age 11. Stella, age 13. Mike, age 15. Two years apart. Add another year to the age of Mike and you get 16. Get to the age of Mike and you get 16. 16 years ago, it's reasonable to assume, Pete Liliopoulos got married. Mike and Fulton, 16 years ago, it's reasonable to assume, Pete Liliopoulos got married. Liliopoulos got married. If I can find the day of that marriage, there'll be a record. That will constitute a clue. Miss Livencott. Yes, please. Take a letter, please. Take a letter, please. Yes, sir. Will you be good enough to examine the marriage records on file in your bureau and inform us whether you have any record of the marriage of one Pete Liliopoulos? Record of the marriage of one Pete Liliopoulos. The date should be around 1915. Not later than 1916. Later than 1916. Thank you in advance. I am sincerely yours. I send that letter to the Bureau of Vital Statistics in each of the 48 states in all the Canadian provinces, please. Yes, sir. In all the Canadian provinces, please. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sure my good friend, Dara, whether it's a clueless crime or not. Well, whether it's a clueless crime or not. <laughs> answers drift in from state and province, wearily repeating that no records of the marriage of Pete Liliopoulos existed. And then one day, Parker wires Dara. Have established Liliopoulos married Vancouver, Washington, 1915. Letter following explains. Shall I continue? And Dara promptly replies, you win. Continue by all means. <laughs> To the desk of the remote control sleuth quickly comes a photostat copy of the marriage record of Vancouver, Washington. At first sight, the record does not reveal anything of much value. Parker, however, studies it closely as Miss Lippincott stands by. Well, Lee, there are a couple of things here that are new. What's that, sir? Well, the office gives his profession as cook. Liz gives his profession as cook. This record shows that he's a naturalized citizen. It's got to make things difficult. Why? It's got to make things difficult. Why? Well, if a man is an experienced cook, he won't have much difficulty getting a job anywhere in the world. Good food speaks any language. Oh, well, it may help us. Take this letter, please. D. W. McCormick, Bureau of Naturalization, Washington D.C. Naturalization, Washington D.C. Kindly send me all information in your files on one Pete Heliopolis. Received Heliopolis. Received citizenship papers sometime before 1915. The residence in 1915 was done. The residence in 1915. 1915. Before 1915. 1915. The residence in 1915 was Vancouver, Washington. Very to Vancouver, Washington. Seen as Vancouver, Washington. Very to yours. Is that all, sir? No, no, take it. Is that all, sir? Vancouver, Washington. Very to yours. Is that all, sir? Very to yours. Is that all, sir? No, no, take another letter to Darren Stockton. Take another letter to Darren. 
No, no, take another letter to Dara and Stockton. Letter's record shows Minneapolis occupation as cook. Shows Minneapolis occupation as cook. I suggest that you check the Minneapolis occupation as Letter's record shows Minneapolis occupation as cook. His residence in 1915 was Vancouver, Washington. Letter to New York. Is that all, sir? To New York. Is that all, sir? No, no, take another letter to Dara and Stockton. Letter's record shows Minneapolis occupation as cook. I suggest that you check the cities and towns surrounding Stockton to find if their health departments have examined any applicant for Cook's job to answer the office department have examined any applicant for Cook's job to answer the office description. These towns do not hold health examinations for Russian employees. For Russian employees. Have you many of you Russian owners to ask have you many of you Russian owners to ascertain if Minneapolis has ever been employed by them? Deputy sheriffs combed the San Joaquin Valley for a restaurant owner whom they recognized the picture of Liliopolis. Parker received information from Washington, D.C. that the group was naturalized in Portland in 1914. Then, Dara, Wild Parker, Liliopolis picture identified by Merced Restaurant as cook employed there a few days in April. The proprietor forgets name used, but sure it wasn't Liliopolis. What's the next step? And Parker replies, Liliopolis naturalized Portland 1914. Indicates lived there for some time. Try Portland. They have other records there. District Attorney Darrow sends a man to Portland to search through the court records of that city for several years before 1914. While the officer is settling down to the tremendous task of ferreting perhaps non-existent information regarding one citizen of a city of 300,000 inhabitants, and what he did 18 years before, Sheriff O'Dell receives another report from Deputy Worcester. Sheriff, I, I've got another identification from Baker Street. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Found a restaurant for he'd asked for a job. The manager thinks our photo looks like the guy. When was this? About the first of May. Yeah, that would make it about right. The murder occurred the 20th of April, and he worked a few days at Merced and then headed south for Bakersfield. Yes, but how did he get out of town? Now, listen, you know the answer to that one. We missed him by five minutes. Now, let's see. He worked in Merced, and then he asked for a job in Bakersfield. That means he was heading for Los Angeles. Yeah, maybe. But let me ask you this now. If you were him... Would you head for Los Angeles and that practically force that Jim Davis has built up down there? Well, no, not if I could help it. But where else could he go? Well, over to the Hatch of Peace, to and across the desert to Barso, and through Arizona to Mexico. Yes, you may be right. Here, let me take the trail across the Mojave, then. It may be a nutty hunt, but I'd like to try it. Go to it, Wilbur, and I've got a feeling that you're on the right track. <laughs> California, a shimmering, parching desert moon in midsummer at a roadside restaurant. Sure, I know that hombre. He was here for me last year. He did? When? Oh, he was here for, well, I don't know. Uh, Harry, how long does Sam work here? I think so. Yeah, that's right. He was here most of all in there. They say his name was Sam. That's right. What was his last name? I don't think he ever told me. The other one never mentioned his last name mm-hmm. either. What other one? The fellow that was with him. Oh, there was somebody with him? Yeah, they sent to him an old Chevy with an Oregon license plate on it. And what was the license number? How should I know? I was more than a year ago. Say, what do you think I am? A detective? <laughs> Back in New Jersey, Chief Parker ponders this new information. Well, May last year, our hero took short orders in Barstow, California. It was accompanied by a man who drove a car with an Oregon license. The trail led from Stockton to Merced, south to Bakersfield, across the Barstow and in. I'm well, trying to agree with Deputy Worcester that they were heading for Mexico. Heading for Mexico, where? Well, we'll backtrack again. Miss Livingstead. Yes, Chief. Have you got applicants out there to begin? Yes, sir. 
Thanks. Have you ever been to the town where that Minneapolis fellow was born? Mr. Washington reports, sir. Uh, let me see. Uh, here it is. Uh, Ryan O'Brien. Ryan O'Brien, sir. Hmm. Argentine, Joe, England, Germany, Greece. There you are. Let's see now. Raino, U16. Raino, Raino. Here it is. In the province of Arcadia. It's a small country village, I suppose. Have you placed him there, sir? No, but I've got a hunch he might be there. The trouble is that you can't get any cooperation from local authorities in those small European towns. Anyway, he's probably using an assumed name. First of all, I can't write Greek. Your friend Professor Capps over Tipton might help you on that, sir. Yes, I could. That's a good idea, Miss Lippincott. I'll go over and see him right away. And so Chief Parker leaves his death for the only time during his amazing remote control investigation of the Stockton murder. He travels just 20 miles to Princeton, New Jersey, to explain his problem to his friend, Professor Edward Tapp, teacher of Greek at the university. That's the situation, Professor. The trail ends in the Mojave Desert. But according to our theory, it may reappear in this little town in Greece. I'll be glad to help you all I can, Chief, but I disagree with you on one point. I believe we should communicate directly with the police officer in Arcadia, rather than work to Athens. Communicating with the local men directly will inflate their ego. Maybe you're right at that. Now, you say you believe your man was heading for Mexico. Well, why not communicate with ports on the east coast of Mexico? You may have shipped there from, to some port in Europe, possibly in Spain. Why not write them? Well, it's once again. I don't speak Spanish either. Well, I can find someone in the language department to help us with that. <laughs> That's fine. Now... If you're heading for home, by the time you get to Mexico, you'd be pretty low on money. They try to work this way. Probably ship it a cook. Why don't they keep records of the men they sign on in Mexican ports? Well, they can't hear anything by asking. To Laino in Bar Greek, the Chanty Cole Better Cruise in Matamoros in Euro Mexico goes to detective's request for information. Slowly the answers come back. No. 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 Never heard of Peter Leopolis. He is not in Riano. He never signed aboard any boat, leaving Veracruz or Matamoris or Tampico. As far as Parker's correspondence are concerned, he never existed at all. Parker's investigation comes to an ignominious halt. But the next day, a letter from Stockton arrives at Parker's desk. This is the thing Adela Wright. One of my mares uncovered something for you in those Portland files at last. In 1914, three months before Liliopolis was naturalized, he had gone to court to have his name officially changed from Smirno Smirnodronis to Pete Liliopolis. This is the key. This is the dynamite to blast through the thick wall which has stopped the investigation. Parker swings into action. Port Captain, Tampico, Mexico. Have you any record of one Spano Spinogranis planning on a ship at Good Harbor, possibly in the capacity of cook, in the summer of 1932? Ellis Parker, Chief of Detectives, Wellington County, New Jersey, United States of America. Ellis Parker, Wellington County, established in Needle. Our record shows. Smirno Smirnogran is find his cook on Trump Steamer Private Equator bound for Pernambuco, Brazil, and July 1932. Manuel Gonzalez, Port Capitan, Tampico, Mexico. Port Captain, Pernambuco, Brazil. And facing Smirno Smirnogran, cook on Trump Private Equator, landed Pernambuco sometime July 1932. Are you in a record of him? Ellis Parker, Chief of Detectives. Ellis Parker, Chief of Detectives, Burlington County, established in Middle States Americani. Pride of Equator, Saint Cook in Pernambuco in July 1932. Former Cook took passage for Barcelona on the Andalusia, August 3, 1932. 
Pablo Cantan, Port Capitan, Estados Unidos de Brasil. Chief of Police, Athens, Zoo. My man's right name is Smirnoff Swanagonis. Kindly check our Arcadia for records of such a man and advise. We hold one for murder, Alex Parker. Alex Parker, Burlington County, New York, United States. A record shows Smirno Smirno Granis, born in Raimo, and emigrated to your country in 1907. There is rumor he has returned and investigating. John Pandolfo, Chief of Police, out in Hellas. Arthur continues spinning his web. A web composed of strands of the transatlantic cable, the filaments of his relentless man-hunting brain. Williopolis, alias Smirno Granis, had landed in Barcelona had immediately re-embarked for Athens, had taken a train from Athens to Argos. Two years have elapsed. It is now a sunny May morning in the sleepy little hamlet of Raino in legend-filled Arcadia. A seller of sweet meat sits before his little shop lazily flicking buzzing flies from his wares when a stranger approaches him. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, some sweet meat today. Here are some very nice ones I just made. Your name is Nuno Tani? Yes. You have been to America? Uh, yes, for some time. But I come back to my beloved Raino. I do not like America. It is no good. Did you ever know a fellow countryman in America by name of Pete Liliopolis? Pete. What name did you say? Pete Liliopolis. No, no, I never heard of him. Here's a picture of him. Recognize him from that? No, 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 I never saw him before. Honored oh, sir, can't I sell you some sweet meat? Seems to me this picture looks like you. But no, this man has a clean shaven face. I have a big mustache. Well, he looks like you. These honey pastries are very nice, sir. Try some of them, please. We're under arrest. Liliopolis, alias Smirnogranis. You're under arrest for murder. No, 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 there's some mistake. I never hurt anyone. I never did anything. No, 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 no. If I then come along with me. You're going for a nice trip all the way back to Stockton, California. Did Ellis Parker, the remote control sleuth, find Stockton's murderer? But valuable though Chief Parker's work was, he himself closed the case with the highest praise for the meticulous investigation conducted by Sheriff Odell and District Attorney Della of San Joaquin County. Without the aid of this valuable and complete groundwork, Chief Parker admits he could have done nothing. The United States government, at the request of District Attorney Dara, immediately began expedition proceedings with the Greek government. But due to the fact that Smyrna Granis, alias Oleopolis, had failed to inform the Greek government at the time of his naturalization in Portland, Greece held that he was still a Greek citizen. However, the Greek Foreign Office ruled that Smyrna Granis had violated the laws of Greece by committing murder in California and therefore must stand trial in Athens. Depositions have been taken and are now en route to Greece, where Smirogran's guilt is held to be a foregone conclusion, and the facts of the case are being awaited by the High Court in Athens, merely to determine the degree of punishment to be meted out to the murderer of the Stockton school teacher. And now a surprise awaits every motorist who drives into a Rio Grande gasoline station. Uh, what's this I hear about your selling an oversized quart of oil for a quarter? That's right. You get two extra ounces in every quart can of Sinclair Opaline motor oil. Mm. But only 25 cents. Well, it's the cheapest canned oil you carry, isn't yes. it? I've got Western oils here to sell for 30 cents a quart. But all the trick processes in the world can't improve on a poor quality base. I'll guarantee the Sinclair Opaline oil made from the finest mid-continent crude will outlast the highest price Western oil. You guarantee it? <laughs> well, what proof is that? My guarantee is backed by Sinclair, the world's largest independent oil refiner. And Opaline is the oil that made Sinclair famous. 
Rio Grande guarantees it, too. Oh. Give you an oversized cord for a quarter then. And oh, by the way, I'd better have some Rio Grande cracked gasoline to go with it. You're a smart buyer, sir. And here's the present for you. Read this latest copy of the Calling All Cars News. There's a two detective story, of movie news, a theater and radio guide. Why buy a magazine when you can drop into any Rio Grande service station and get a publication like this absolutely free? <laughs>